You guys are a lot of fun. This is the type of shit that I like to do, by the way. Like, this is, this is what I tour around with, right? Uh, I, I, I like talking about uh, big issues. I like talking about weird shit. Uh, I, I have hope in us, right? And that's what, it is, that's what everything I talk about is about. It's about us, you know? Uh, I'll tell you guys this story before I go, because I feel like this is the appropriate place to tell the story. Uh, a couple years ago, like when I first started working the road, uh, I was basically taking any gig that I could just to like get out there and, and do stand up in front of different uh, people. I got booked in uh, Conia, Pennsylvania, uh, which if you guys are not familiar with that, it's about a half an hour south of the metropolitan city of here. Uh, so, Conia, <laughs> yeah, it's right by Conia Lake, yeah. I got booked to do stand up there. And I was a lot younger and, and like less political, is basically what it was, right? I wasn't as political. I still had some stuff that I talked about, right? Issues that I talked about. So I, uh, I was driving up there. I was living in Pittsburgh, so it's about two hours to get up there. The last 20 minutes of this drive was just nothing. There was just nothing on either side of me, right? There wasn't like corn or like houses. Or, there was just fucking nothing. It's where black holes go to die. That's. What's on the way to Kanye? That's what it is. <laughs> right, so eventually, there was a light in the distance, and it was the biker bar that I was going to perform at. And I pulled up into the gravel parking lot, and usually when I perform, like, I like to wear something, you know, a little bit nice. So I was wearing, like, a sweater and some, and some nice jeans and boots and stuff, and I immediately walk into this bar, and nobody is wearing sleeves. Right? No, no one had even heard of sleeves in Kanye, Pennsylvania. I was a goddamn trendsetter. I was wearing three pairs of sleeves. Was it all that pickup night. trucks? Yeah, it was a bunch of bikes and a bunch of pickup trucks. Hey, it's a gravel parking lot. You know? I'm not judging them for what they drive. So the woman running the show, very excited, she runs up to me and she goes, Oh my God, we're so excited to have you here. We love comedy. The last time we were here, we found out that an 18-year-old was at the show, and the comedian found out, and we just spent the whole show making fun of that kid. It was amazing, and I was like, that's really great that you gave a child self-esteem issues for the rest of his life. That's <laughs> super fun for everybody. <laughs> so, <laughs> we start, you know, the room starts filling in, no sleeps, so, uh, and we start kicking off the show. And the woman comes up to me and uh, uh, she goes, uh, well, what do you want me to say about you? And I was like, what? And she's like, yeah, do you have like television credits? And then I laughed in her face. Because if I did, I wouldn't be spending my Saturday nights in a black hole graveyard <laughs> where sleeves haven't made it, you know? So after I laughed at her, which wasn't the right thing to do, I looked at her and I said, no. And she goes, well, what am I supposed to say about you? And I said, well, you can say that I'm Indian. And she goes, oh, really? And I was like, yeah, that's what I am. Like, why would, what, why would I say that to, like, gain some kind of advantage over these people? Like, when has me claiming that I'm an immigrant ever been an advantage? It hasn't even been an advantage on college applications, because they just look at me and they go, oh, well, you're not even one of the cool minorities we're oppressing these days. So that <laughs> So I looked at her and I was like, yeah, you know, because that's what I am. And she goes, oh, all right. So she goes up. And look, this is like, these are, this is all sound system, right? This is like a microphone, and we're being amplified through speakers. What this venue had was a mic attached to, um, you know, the radio that Dave Cusack had in the movie <laughs> Say Anything. To, uh, you know, that that's, that's what was supposed to to spread the word of comedy to the great people of comedy. <laughs> so she goes up and she does her announcement and she goes, okay, we're bringing up our first comedian for the evening. Now, I didn't want him to say this, but he's making me. I am not. You could have literally gone up there and just been like, look at this fancy homeless man we found. <laughs> And that would have been a great introduction, right? Low expectations. She goes, hey, Ali, I didn't want to say this, but he's making me. He's Indian. Please welcome Krish Mohan. No applause. And I walk up on stage and I was like, hey, how's everybody doing? Still, 
no applause, <laughs> right? So I start my act, and I was, you know, I was talking about being an immigrant and uh, things like that, and it was getting nothing. It was like pure silence throughout this entire thing. And I'm just getting more and more mad, because I'm not talking about heavy shit. I didn't even talk about war, or how capitalism is destroying the country. Like, none of that shit, you know what I mean? Like, I was just like, hey, I'm a cute Indian boy. Aren't I adorable? Look at these sleeves. Like, that's basically what I was doing. I was fucking getting nothing, and I'm just getting enraged. And I said, fuck it. If I'm going down in flames, I'm going down on my terms. So I just dove into all the religious shit that I had, everything about race, I was like, let me tell you another thing about how you treat black people. And then it was off, right? And everybody's just like, what is happening? And they're all scared. I'm scared. It's not a good situation. At the end of, the, at the end of the, uh, the, my set, the headliner who's supposed to go up is just waving his flashlight at me to tell me to get off stage, right? So I go, all right, everybody. Uh, my name is Serge Mohan. You guys have been great. I have CDs that I'll be selling in the back of the room. <laughs> But I'm gonna bring up your next comedian. <laughs> that shows in Pittsburgh, whatever the fuck his name is. It's not important. Uh, he's just not important. Uh, so as we're as I'm getting off stage, my back foot is still on the stage. And this guy, uh, the headliner goes, uh, keep it going for Chris, everybody. Who wants to kill that faggot? <laughs> Applause break. It's the first one of the show, folks. And it was to kill that faggot, which was me. I don't know how many of you in here have walked through an entire room that has agreed to murder you. But it's a little uncomfortable. I didn't really know what to do, so I just waved to everybody. Like, hey! I'm old target practice over here. That's me. Don't forget, see these in the back. A man spent 20 minutes on stage shitting on me. That's what the headliner did, right? There's like a stool, like this little bench with a sheet on top of it. And he was like, what's this? Oh, this must be the box we're gonna bury Christian after the show. It is now dawning on me that I might not make it out of here alive. But I had not been paid yet. And I really needed those $125. So I sat through the rest of this man's hacky bullshit. For 45 minutes, it was just hacky shit all through the thing. And then at the end, he was selling his merch, and his merch wasn't even like buttons, or like a t-shirt, or not even a CD. It was chip clips. <laughs> yeah, it's a, those are, uh, you know, the things that you put on bags of chips, so you don't uh, eat them. Yeah, that's when he was selling chip clips, and his big pitch was, Look, if you don't have bags of chips at home, you can buy two of them, and they become nip clips. You guys get it? Do you guys understand? Because people have two nipples, and you can buy two of them. Uh, he sold 30 of them. 30 in front of my fucking face. I watched 30 adults line up and hand him American dollars into his goddamn hands to buy chip clips because he said nip clip. <laughs> I walked up to the, the woman running the show, and I looked at her, and I shook her hand, and she didn't want to make eye contact with me, which is fair. Uh, <laughs> so she handed me my money, and I said, thank you for having me, and she went to the back. And I went over, and I shook the headliner's hand, and I said, hey, it's really nice working with you. And the headliner looks at me, and he goes, you need to cut that race shit out of your act. Racism doesn't exist in America. We took care of that shit in the 60s. And at that point, I had to leave, right? I had to leave. That's my limit. Because I, if I would have stayed there, would have stabbed a white man in the face to prove that racism sure does exist. You guys have been a lot of fun. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your evening. You guys have a great day.